and this fantastic race made a fantastic start. The three miles opening time trial around the street of Boulogne Billancourt is an hors d'oeuvre to the Tour de France. It gives you a first yellow jersey, a first leader of the race. And with controversy too, Thierry Marie recorded the fastest time. So France had a leader already. And this was the controversy, streamlining on the saddle, and it was banned later. But not early enough to disqualify Thierry Marie, he was the first rider to lead the Tour de France. And the very next day, history was in the making. Vieta can't believe it. If he wins this stage with a gap of over a minute, he'll be in yellow on the very first day of his very first Tour de France. But because of bonuses at those special sprints throughout the day, Steeder didn't need a minute, nor did he need to win the stage. Because Paul de Schura is the winner. A bank is at the ball there. It's Denise in second place. Dollarfeld is third. Anderson will be fourth. And I think Steeder will just get this in the photograph. The yellow jersey is on your shoulders. What's it like to be the first American to wear it? Well, I'm proud to be the first Canadian to wear the yellow jersey. <laughs> Uh, never mind the first American, but it's great to be, you know, with 7-Eleven, and uh, with their, without their support, I wouldn't be here, of course, but uh, God, it's, uh, it feels great. God, I... But fortunes change fast in the Tour de France, and on the very next day, the team time trial of 56 kilometers to Saint-Quentin, Alex Steeder lost that yellow jersey. The System U team here working well for the man on the right, their team leader, Laurent Fignon, were making great gains on the road. Fignon was hoping to take time here, and then go to the Pyrenees with a good lead. And it was a disastrous time trial for the Colombian team. They were working for Luis Herrera. They worked so hard, they shed four men, and those men were eliminated. So it left System U at the top, and Thierry Marie back in yellow. On stage three, on the road to Lieva, it was the Spaniard, Federico Echave, who escaped the lot. Then he punctured almost in sight of the finish and over 200 riders swept by him to contest the finish at Lieva. And watch the rider on the right, because it's the tall American Davis Finney riding his first European event who snatches the victory. For Finney, it was history again. I'm in shock. I'm in complete shock. This is my first race win as a professional in Europe, and uh, couldn't, have been, couldn't have been better. I, I'm just I'm amazed, and I'm just tremendously pleased. My, I found my biggest victory in my career. But there's always danger. Too many riders? Certainly too many. It is, I think uh, Leviton is thinking more of his pocket than the, than, the, than the security of the riders because it's not, um, especially a stage like tomorrow, it's in and out of all the small streets and a lot of traffic and there'll be one, 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 all the riders be in one line like from start to finish. And if there's no crashes, it'll be a miracle really. Oh, what's happened here? This is look like Slavatink's on the floor. Oh, goodness me, Josh Slavatink has crashed. And he's landed very heavily on his head here. There we have the red kite with a kilometre to go, 1,000 metres. It looks like these riders could possibly stay away, but the bunch are going to be boring down on them now. Well, their 15 second lead is down to seven seconds. And SUA knows all about being caught inside of the finish. Oh, and Kapistan is gone. He assessed whether SUA was bluffing or was tired. He's decided he was bluffing. And he's gone, and Echeve has been eaten alive by that group. If Cabastani had not made his move then, he would have gone too. The sprinters almost had their man, and he went. Cabastani hanging on, the green jersey of Eric van der Aert is coming now. One of the fastest sprinters in the race is through for second place. So Eric van der Aert denied his victory again, and top of the leaderboard now goes Dominique Gagnon. Still a member of the System U team with Thierry Marie falling back to second place. But the tour has its niceties too. And the very next day, on stage five, the road to villers sur mer it was a case of hello mum. Or dad? No, mum. And on the route to tour, you don't stop for anything. Bernard Eno sees the optician. And you can see here, Van der Velde is checking the route. He's actually taking out of his back pocket the contour of the day and making sure exactly how far there is to go and how much effort is required to keep away from the bunch. And Van der Velde looks like he's going to fall off. His chain's probably come off. He's, and he's left Pellier to go away now. Well, Van der Velde has made a terrible mistake. 
Paul was describing the overgearing of Pellier, and I felt that so too had Van der Velde done exactly the same thing, and his gear simply could not be turned over. But the plans didn't fail completely, and Van der Velde, who's finished third before in the Tour de France overall, rejoined Joel Pellier, and then took him on for the sprint finish. Half a free wheel there, maybe just to check himself for a few seconds of Van der Velde. Van der Velde, and he's going to go! Well, there you are, never trust the Dutchman. Van der Velde goes on the right of the screen now. Pellier is shocked by that. I think he really felt Van der Velde was going to give him the stage. Oh, he'll be so disappointed. It's been a wonderful day for the Dutchman. He takes the stage, Johan Van der Velde, to a lovely applause here. And victory by Johan van der Velde also confirmed him as the new overall leader of the Tour de France by 36 seconds ahead of Dominique Gagne and Thierry Marie. And for the rest, it was back to the beach. Stage six then went from villers sur mer on towards Cherbourg. And it was here where there was a change in winners because no Italians won a stage in the Tour de France since 1983. And Guido Bontempi put that right. On the seventh day, we went from Cherbourg to saint hilaire du Arcue, And there was again a big sprint amongst the riders with Belgian Ludo Peters, a great single-day classic rider and a former yellow jersey holder in the Tour de France, hit the front at the right moment. You can always be assured if Ludo Peters takes part, he manages at least one stage win. He didn't let us down this year either. The significant thing here was that the Danish rider, Jürgen Pedersen, pulled on that yellow jersey. Only one of the Danes ever done that, Kim Anderson, and Jürgen Pedersen was delighted and, I must say, very surprised. He pushed van der Velde back by 11 seconds. On stage 8, from saint Hilaire, we went on towards Nantes, past Mont Saint-Michel. With the whole bunch going to the finish now, perhaps Jeff Leakins here will take the stage. Leakins has been the spinter so far, but the Panasonics too, the blue boys in blue are looking for their man in green because he's in the same team as Panasonic, all the Panasonic riders. Eric van der Arden wearing today the green jersey as leader on point, and this is the sort of finish that van der Arden has waited for. For a week you can see his green jersey, jumped in nicely now, van der Arden scrabbling for wheels now. Jeff Leakins on the left of the picture here to go through. Van der Arden in green, is he going to get this one? What a finish it is going to be. Van der Arden on the right, Jeff Leakins on the left, they're going to hit the line almost together. And I think it was indeed the Panasonic rider, Eddie Plankett, who took it on the line.